So, Anna, are you uh, are you ready to make this pitch to Deb? Not quite. I, I, I've heard uh, she's uh, very serious. And uh, yes. I, I, I'm really nervous because, yeah, we have been planning this for quite a while. And what if she doesn't accept it? Oh, she she's here. She's here. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. So it's good to be with you today. And um, as you know, we we wanted to get together with you today to kind of like play out maybe the possibility of a new ma massive open online course as a collaboration between the University of Colorado and the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. Mm -hmm. So um, we've kind of I've known my colleague Anna for a couple of years now, and we worked in the first MOOC together. And um, well, we're just kind of excited to kind of bring a new idea to you and, and see what you think. So uh, could we interrupt since I haven't met Anna yet? Anna, could you just tell me very quickly your name and your role? So I'm Anna Sanchez Prieto. I'm doctor in uh, medieval history and in education uh, sciences. And I've been working in the University Complutense of Madrid for 20 years. OK, that's so. great. Thank you. And I don't know if you know me. I'm Deborah Kiak franson mm -hmm. associate president for digital education and engagement. Um, I was on the Boulder campus of the University of Colorado for 15 years and I've been working in uh, the system office for three years. Well, Anna, um, what, what, what did you have in mind? Yeah, um, I've been teaching medieval manuscripts, medieval illuminated manuscripts for yeah something uh, 15 years. And there's nothing of this sort in, uh, in the MOOC universe, or at least in Coursera. And I think it would be a very good idea because you don't see so many courses in Coursera, especially about humanities. Mm -hmm. So I think it's already maybe the moment to, to start uh, with humanities in, in the MOOC universe. Well, let me just ask you this. Who's the audience for this? I mean, do we really know that people will even sign up for this? Uh, librarians or training librarians that have uh, an interest should have at, at least some acquaintances with medieval manuscripts and they are normally not so seriously addressed in uh, librarianship uh, programs but okay. also book lovers book collectors mm -hmm. um, of course medieval manuscripts are not something that everybody has at home because uh, they are very expensive but there are <laughs> many facsimile collectors uh -huh. So, um, I, I've been working for two uh, companies that uh, make facsimiles of medieval manuscripts, and it's it's quite a world in itself. So they mm -hmm. are yeah. very passionate uh, collectors and book lovers. I think that would be quite quite a, also a, a, a public for us. Mm -hmm. And in general, curious about history and, of course, the Middle Ages, but also mm -hmm. art history, because we will contemplate also miniature and illumination, a little bit of iconography. Mm -hmm. um, what about um, museums? Um, maybe two, but we are we wouldn't be addressing museum in yeah in, in our central points because books are normally in libraries. So I'm not no. not open okay. to the big public, but uh, uh, but most to the researchers. But still, uh, some medieval manuscripts, illuminated manuscripts, are very very well known, such as the the um, uh, Trevisier of the Duke of Berry, and that you find everywhere, and everybody likes them. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't think we can get as much as, as such a big audience as uh, Python uh, for everybody of uh, Dr. Charles Severance, of course, because there are mm -hmm. more people interested in uh, data science or, or in uh, programming than in medieval manuscripts. I understand that. But okay. on the other side, there are already many MOOCs about programming and data science and Python, and there is hardly anything about history. And certainly not about medieval history. Um, and Roger, I've got a question for you. How um, how are you going to get the word out about this? Because you've you've both, or Anna has just said that that the audience is going to be smaller than than those really huge MOOCs. Um, so how are you going to get the word out? You've got a smaller audience, so it seems to me that you might have to work a little harder. 
Well, I think yeah, I think you're getting at a great point, Depp. And I think ultimately what we're driving at it is a, a, a more common central issue, which is what is it? What is, what is MOOC education supposed to be about? It's about it's supposed to be about the betterment of humanity, betterment of ourselves as individuals. And if we're really committed to the humanities, um, then we know that there's an there's a thirsty audience out there for learning more about literature, about art, about history, about people in general. And so in many ways, I think the way I look at this course and another way Anna looks at it is it is um, that the manuscripts are a window into ourselves, into our history. So I think we really are selling in many ways the beauty of the manuscripts and how they're like really time capsules for history. So I think in one way, we, we sell the MOOC to existing people that we know about. So the 15,000 folks that have already participated in, in the Deciphering Secrets uh, uh, MOOC on medieval Spain is one place we'll reach out to. But also as we start to communicate to out to museums, to libraries, to other digital humanists like ourselves to say, we have a great course uh, available for a broad audience. And I think that's one of the key things about it is that this course can be about one, introducing people to the Middle Ages beyond some kind of fanciful notions that they might get through a video game or a movie. Um, we can introduce really neat concepts to them like, you know, what is scholasticism? How do universities develop? Was that in relationship to manuscripts? Or who was a Charlemagne and what was this Carolingian Renaissance? And I think by like activating those big topics for people's and people's minds, then they start to see why these manuscripts are so important and they we will start to get excited about them. And it, it is the kind of that avenue for them to come into more intensive studies because I think through this course, I think what Anna has contemplated, which is really wonderful, is not only teaching about how manuscripts are prepared, but also asking our students actually to participate in the process, to actually have their own kind of illuminated manuscript project that they can have a tangible connection to the history. I mean, Anna, I mean, I think that's a big part about this project, uh, this MOOC that we're proposing. Um, could you at least kind of tell uh, Deb a little bit about it and, and why you think it's so important? I've been doing this activity with my um face-to-face -face students for already a few years, something like five or six years. And they are making their own manuscript with very cheap uh, materials, of course, parchment and uh, wood and, and leather are very expensive. So we are using school cardboard and uh, corrugated cardboard and uh, yeah, very, very cheap materials, but they are making their own manuscript. And they try as far as possible to replicate the technique. They have to study, of course, the theory, uh, but then they have to apply it to their own projects. Th this project really puts the student into the head and the hands of a medieval copyist. And um, well, when one, one understand a lot about present books through medieval books too, how books are as they are, well, it is a very long way from the Middle Ages to here, but our shape of book are more or less rectangular. So it's uh, also a little bit like a look, uh, looking for our roots, the, the roots of our culture. And uh, well, breaking cliches about the Middle Ages too, which is uh, yes. kind of fun. What do you think, Deb? Could you, could um, you do it? Yeah, I, I, I think so. And um, I, I'd like to help in, um, in a couple of ways. I'd like to, um, watch this uh, this hands-on these how you do these hands-on activities at scale and I'd like to help really spread the word out to um, uh, especially to the libraries around the world because this could be this course could be um, beneficial not just for the people who are working at the libraries but but for their um, for their clients or, you know, for the people who come to their library, they could be using this for their own community outreach um, mm. to, to get people to understand uh, better what they have. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think we can go for this. Let's, let's do this. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. What have we signed up for? <laughs> <laughs>